Aloha, and welcome back to Hawaii, the state of clean energy on ThinkTech Hawaii. I'm your host, Mitch Ewan, and today on our show, we'll be discussing the Association of en Energy Engineers for Hawaii with our guest, Russ Kohler, who's the president of AEE Hawaii. So welcome, Russ, and uh, let's start off. Okay. Aloha, Mitch. Aloha, you all. Nice to be with you. Nice to have you. And let's just start. I just want to start off a little bit with your background of how you how you became an, enge an energy engineer in the first place. Well, I graduated from a Merchant Marine Academy, uh, Maine Maritime Academy, studying marine engineering. And uh, I've always said, and it was very clear to me that a ship is the most efficient cogeneration combined energy system in the world. Uh, that got me into energy. While I was at the academy, my father uh, in California at the time started an energy management company called American Energy Saving. Uh, by the time I became a senior, I was very interested in getting into energy management and energy efficiency. And so when I graduated and got my Coast Guard third, third assistant engineer license, I moved to California, I did not get on the ship, decided to stay on land and get into energy management and become an energy management expert. So that's what I did, that's how I did it. My first position was at a hospital where I, within a couple of years, became the chief engineer. And uh, it was arguably the most energy efficient hospital in the state of California. Uh, my dad was the director at the time and uh, I was the one who was putting all the projects together for the chiller plants and boiler plants and uh, all the different energy management control system stuff we were doing in the hospital. So that was uh, mid seventies. Okay. I took over the company and uh, with my brother in 1980. And from 1980 for the next 25 years, that, that was my life. Uh, did quite a bit of alternative energy, cogeneration, energy efficiency projects. So that's where I was cutting my teeth. So, so that was a consulting company. So you had a, a, wide, a wide range of various systems that you were able to to look at and uh, become smart on, right? That's correct. That's correct. Uh, everything from lighting retrofits to cogeneration. Well, that serves you very well in your current job, I'm sure. It sure does. <laughs> when I tell people that I was actually involved with renewable energy in the early 80s, uh, they look at me with disbelief. But uh, believe it or not, that is when the solar industry started to cut its teeth and the wind, wind turbines and things uh, started out as tax shelters, uh, got, got their wings. Tell us about AEE. What is it and why should we be interested in it? Well, AEE was founded in 1977. So uh, a couple of years before I joined, I joined in 1980. Uh, I got to know the founder of AEE quite well. His name was Albert Tooman. Um, Al developed AEE to essentially be a teaching and educational uh, society so that you know you could bring you could bring the knowledge to all energy engineers. Uh, be early adapters to college universities, to engineering students, um, with the goal of uh, always to make, make the world more energy efficient, uh, combat carbon, carbon, the carbon footprint around the world. Uh, it was all being done at early stages. Uh, his goal was to take this internationally. It's the only international energy engineering society in the world. Uh, we're in a hundred countries. 
There's over 18,000 members uh, worldwide. Um, and as I say, I joined in 1980. So, uh, you know, do the math. I've been a member for 41 years. Um, I became a certified energy manager in the mid 90s, shortly after the program was developed. The certified energy manager program within AEE is the gold standard for the organization. There's, you know, 13 or 14,000 uh, certified energy managers worldwide. And uh, again, uh, it was to develop younger engineers and, and uh, students and bring them into the, into the field. Uh, a lot of the talk today is about, you know, how many, how many of these energy engineers are gonna be retiring and do we have enough energy engineers coming up through the ranks to take those positions. So is, is a CEM recognized generally across the industry as like, you said it's the gold standard. Is, is that a certificate that the you know, industry recognizes? Yes, uh, it's internationally recognized by ANSI. And I, I can't quote off the top of my head, I didn't write it down here, but one of the European organizations is, is also recognized this worldwide. Um, in many cases, and I did put this down on a slide, I'm, I'm not reading from the slides, but many positions worldwide, you have to have a CEM or you have to be capable of getting a CEM. I've seen many cases where someone will get a position with the stipulation that within a certain amount of years, within two years, let's say, you will achieve your CEM. Right. And I've seen too, where if someone didn't achieve it, they, uh, they were looking for another job. Um, what, what goes into getting a CEM certification? I mean, is there a course that you have? I mean, uh, a set of courses you take and you have to write exams and and all that sort of thing? Is, is there, there, there a formal is, program? Yeah, there is a formal five-day course but, with an exam on the fifth day. But backing up from that, if you don't have any formal education in electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, or some form of environmental sciences engineering, uh, the test is very difficult. It's not something that you can just take the five day course and expect to uh, achieve uh, a passing grade. In fact, you have to be able to qualify to be able to take that course. You have to either uh, you know, have, have a college degree, be a professional engineer, or be in, be in the business for X amount of years just to qualify to sit for the uh, for the uh, training and then take how is the uh, training actually given i mean is it i mean maybe pre-covid was it an in-face uh, in-person kind of training program or was it online or was it i mean how do they how do they how do they deliver the program prior to covid it was all it was all face-to-face -face training uh you either for instance i mean with the with the chapter i've looked at bringing instructors over to Hawaii okay. to, to do the, uh, the to do the training. They'd be training along with us as a chapter. Um, the chapters, in a lot of cases, will act as tutors for the students because uh, there's quite a bit of math involved with the, with the test. Right. And it's, a, it's a pretty intense program for five days. Uh, I can tell you, one of my uh, one of my colleagues at Amgen, who was an electrical PE, I, I I talked him into going through the training, and he did not do well on the test. And the reason is because it's a diverse background, right? It's not just electrical; it's it's HVAC, you know, it's generators, it's it's all types of things put in together. Um, you know, water efficiency, lighting, uh, all these different things. 
So do they EE have a textbook like uh, that people are going to uh, study all these various disciplines? Um, AEE has quite an extensive, uh, I, I won't call it a library because you got to buy the books, but it's it's a very extensive list of, of books that you can buy and, and start, you know, get yourself acquainted with a lot of this stuff. Um, the training program itself comes with a, a binder. Uh, it, it's very extensive, lots and lots of information. Uh, and it's not just a, a day training. You, you have, you've got to go home and do homework and, and study. So it's a pretty intense five days. Um, there's been quite a few trainings here on Hawaii, on Oahu. Um, there was one on just before, and I mean just before COVID, or I should say the shutdown, uh, in March last year, there was a, a course and exam on the Big Island. Right. In fact, my, uh, my vice president of the Big Island had, was in that training and she passed the test. But there again, she had 15 years experience with ECO or HELCO. On the island, so you know she had a background. She had a background in, in some renewable and, and some alternative energy. So is the uh, is the exam open book or closed book or how how rigorous is it? You know that's a good question. It, it, it's very rigorous and it is open book. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, but yet it's still. A, if you don't have the background in, in a lot of these subject matters, you're not going to do well uh, without a lot of a lot of studying. And uh, I certainly recommend the tutorials that that are offered. So, how long does it take for your president to your vice president to requalify to take the test again if you didn't do that well? No, no, that's not my vice president. That was a colleague of mine at Amgen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he was an electrical engineer that I worked with at Amgen, uh, the biotech company. Uh, a sharp guy, someone that I had been teaching, but evidently I didn't teach him enough about HVAC. <laughs> Which is uh, pretty critical to in these days because uh, they're such energy hogs. Everyone that's on my board of directors has a certification. Okay. Um, I had mentioned it in a slide that, uh, you know, I, I'm just talking about AE Hawaii for a minute. The board of directors is a pretty diverse group of people. Mm -hmm. um, my vice president of Kauai is, uh, she works at the co op on Kauai. Right. Uh, my vice president of Oahu, he's a VP of engineering with Bank of Hawaii. Uh, my uh, my treasurer is uh, president of a consulting energy consulting firm. Does a lot of work with utilities on on the mainland. Vicky, whom you've met, she is actually a uh, a resource energy energy manager for the Army National Guard. Again, I mentioned earlier. I mean, she couldn't have gotten that position without having. A CEM. Uh, Miles Topping, you know, he's the energy manager at the University of Hawaii. Yeah, no, no, Miles well. He's an interesting one because he had to take his first exam was the certified energy auditor, the CEA. It's listed on, uh, I think the second slide is where it's listed. And when I, you know, I, I interviewed almost all these people I'm talking about, except for Vicky and, and Ray, my treasurer, and recruited them into the into the chapter. Uh, Miles uh, was interesting because he didn't feel like he had enough enough experience, and I convinced him finally that you know you have enough experience to take your CEM, and he did. He took it. Uh, he took it out here in on a, on, in Oahu. A year ago, and uh, actually it was 2019, and he passed his CEM, and uh, that was great. So each one of these guys, my uh, 
director of scholarships. He's got his CEM, CEA. He's a solar, solar PV expert. He's one of the foremost solar guys here on, in the state. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about the scholarship program. This is something I hadn't heard about. So, you know, young upcoming students here, um, is this something for them or is this for people who have already graduated? But anyway, tell, tell us about it. It's about, well, it would be for either one. Um, I mean, if you wanted to go back to school, if you were doing your, your graduate studies, um, we actually had a young lady who worked for, his name is Fred Brooks, my solar guy, my director of scholarship. Um, and we nominated her for a scholarship. So she, she's at the University of Hawaii. Right. She's, she's an electrical engineer. She takes most of her classes out of the same building you're in. And uh, she lives in, I believe, the state of Washington, Milana. And uh, we nominated her for, her for a scholarship. It, it really just depends on where they are in their studies and, and their interests. Uh, you know, here she is, an electrical engineer. She's working for a, a solar PV maintenance company. And um, she, to me, was a perfect candidate for, for a scholarship. So. Yes, we're trying, the student side of our chapter is fairly new. Right. We're trying to build it up. COVID didn't help. <laughs> you know, we, we had plans to get with the, the Dean of Engineering, uh, you know, Miles being down there, uh, setting up meetings, but you know, this was kind of a, a dead year for, it, for that. So it's something that we plan to do for the future. Well, I'm hoping this uh, interview will be helpful to your outreach program for, uh, you know, the uh, these young engineers or, or wannabe engineers that are coming up the line. Well, I do too. I, I, you know, in my position over at the Marine Corps Base Hawaii, as you know, uh, I, I get involved in a lot of teaching. Um, I'm presently teaching a young, what we call energy NCO, uh, the, the Marine Corps. In fact, the Marine Corps Base Hawaii is the only base in the entire world that has an energy NCO. And uh, my job is to, is to teach them and, and get them up to speed and primarily uh, AMI metering, uh, which is you know, advanced metering infrastructure that we have. And the reading meters is, is one of the main things, but I get her involved in a lot of different things. She's new as of November. Um, I, this, she's my third energy NCO and I, and I enjoy teaching We're we're, we're starting to learn about teaching her about energy auditing, uh, got her involved in a very interesting, uh, subject, uh, future project yesterday. I was called by the environmental group over at, over at the base, uh, and of all things, if you read for this, it was about sea turtle hatchlings. Right. Sea okay. turtle hatchlings, uh, mama, mama sea turtles. There's more sea turtle hatchlings in Oahu than they ever have historically recorded this past year. Wow. Yeah, which is amazing. I, and they've never had them over at the base. And the reason that they called me is because what's happening is these hatchlings are, are hatching and they're looking for the moon to direct them to the ocean. And what are they seeing? But light pollution from, from the housing. What? Street lights, house lights, walkway lights, and they're walking into the backyards of uh, base housing. I think, if I'm not mistaken, they've uh, recovered, they've saved about 50. Unfortunately, some have didn't make it, perished, they get into the streets. Uh, and I went out there and I looked at all this yesterday with environmental and I brought my energy NCO and my, my energy engineer colleague, Kiaka, who I think you met. And now she wants to get into the training with environmental 
so that she can actually work with uh, environmental with the whole sea turtle program. And I was thrilled. I mean, it's like, if I never brought you here, you never would have you know, known this. And right. just in that meeting, environmental basically invited her to a training uh, later this month, which awesome. is great. Everything, everything she can learn is great. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, my colleague, uh, well, the energy NCOs that I was working with, uh, the elementary school on base contacted our public works officer. She asked me if we could put a program together. We put a program together and we wound up teaching 400 elementary school students from third grade to fifth grade. Okay. Obviously, the, the third and fourth graders, we taught more basic. The fifth and sixth, they said six. It was third to six. We taught a much more advanced. I put a curriculum together on renewable energy. I slides about your program is there. Hydrogen, hydrogen station, wave energy technology, which is another HNEI technology that uh, has been out at the base for quite some years. Uh, geothermal, which is another thing we're studying with the University of Hawaii. All the different aspects of renewable energy is what we taught. And then, as you know, I invited you and Pat to come and teach the fifth and sixth grade gifted students on some renewable, yeah. on hydrogen technology and on wave energy technology. And, and I know that we all enjoyed it because we were That's asked great. very interesting questions. And I got to tell a story, quick story. I have oh, the right oh. to do that. Those kids were so smart and they asked such great questions, like really good questions. And I, I have to compare them to this group of students I had from Stanford mm -hmm. who came to my, my system I see over the shoulder for a tour. And there were 20 of them and I didn't get one question. They were totally disinterested. And you compare that to the gifted student, I couldn't believe it. I mm -hmm. asked them, what the heck are you guys even doing over here? You're just like bumps on a log. Curiosity. <laughs> Vacation, spring break. Do you remember the best question this, this young lady asked you about fuel cells? She said, well, if everybody in the world starts using fuel cells and the byproduct of fuel cells is water, what are we going to do with all that water? Isn't that going to raise the level of the oceans? <laughs> no. <laughs> that, was, that was a pretty amazing question. That was a pretty good question. That she's thinking through the problem. She's already looking at it as a system and saying, well, it's producing water. What do we do with the water? So that's a great, uh, you know, great logical thinking. So we're, we're, we're getting close to uh, the end. So first of all, another question is, how can all these hatchling uh, engineers out there become members of AEE? How, how, how do they do that, Russ? Well, they can contact me or they can go onto our website, aeehawaii.org. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of information in there. All of our board members are in there. They can contact any one of us. Uh, any, any one of the board members would be happy to help them get involved. We have a, what I feel is a great blog. Uh, they can see all the different things that we've been working on, talking about uh, from a hydrogen fuel station. It's a great website. It's still evolving. That's how they can they can get involved easily. Um, they can call me at any time. So what uh, what's the fee structure? So AEE National, the the main AEE is three hundred dollars a year. Uh, as you know, you don't have to be an AEE National member to join the Hawaii chapter. Uh, to join the Hawaii chapter by itself is $50. Uh, 
So if you were to join AE National, including the chapter, it would be $350 a year. Uh, students is different. We were only charging $10. Oh, wow. That's a no brainer. Really? We're only charging $10 at this point. We, you know, we, we want to get as many students in, involved as we can. Um, what can I say? <laughs> in fact, I got a, I got a call yesterday from the, the AEE national vice president for region five, which we're part of region five. And she was talking to me about doing an online training course for high school students. <laughs> so Wouldn't that be great? Training is, is training and seminars and conferences. Education is really what AEE is about. Right. Uh, you know, I, I have pretty much the same goal as you to help the state of Hawaii become, to reach its goal but we want to reach a goal with zero emission technology. Yeah. And that, that, that's a whole nother show. And I know you do those shows all the time. But, okay, so we're almost uh, out of time, uh, but I'd just like to give you an opportunity to give one final pitch to our viewers and to the engineers uh, who are not members yet. So here's your chance to give your quick elevator speech, Russ. Well, please uh, go, to our, go to our website, Check it out. If you like it, contact me. Contact any of the board members that you might know uh, that are in there. Uh, I'm happy to talk to you about any subject in energy management that you would like to talk to, talk about. And we get involved in some really, really great things. I mean, just some of the trainings that we're working on uh, is our HVAC. How, how energy projects are affected by maintenance. And uh, that, that was uh, widely praised when we did that. We were working with you, Mitch, on a, on a hydrogen program uh, seminar. Okay. Now working with Nicole Louts on a geothermal seminar. And, uh, you know, so some of the tours that we're looking at doing is going down and seeing the new uh, OE35 uh, wave energy technology, WEC wave energy converter. It's down in Honolulu Harbor, uh, But again, COVID is, is kind of stymied us from all this, so. Okay. Please go to our website. If you have any Thanks questions. Thanks so much, Russ, so. Give me a call. <laughs> okay, we'll have to leave it there. You've been watching Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Think Tech Hawaii. Today, we've been discussing the Association of Energy Engineers, AEE Hawaii with Russ Kohler. Thanks very much for participating, Russ. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, Mitch. Take care. Aloha, everyone. Aloha. <laughs>